Hi, I'm Chris Maglino with Sequire Spotlight, and I am here with Rich Howe from Inuvo. And Inuvo has been working on stuff that is coming so into favor now. I don't know if anybody's seen in the news stuff about cookies and how Google is getting rid of cookies and how uh, identity is becoming much more important to companies or, uh, you know, to the, the big players in the space. And you had the foresight of knowing that was coming. Everybody was warning the industry that that was coming, but you guys built the tech to, to deal with this issue. I, I think you guys are positioned for a massive windfall of advertising dollars to come your way. Tell us about the business. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's exactly what we did. Uh, there were really two reasons you know, we designed uh, the solution originally. One was to solve the privacy problem, right? We knew as a result of having built a couple of other successful companies in the space, notably companies like Axiom and LiveRamp. LiveRamp, for those who don't know, was built at Axiom, was invented at Axiom uh, and spun out. We knew that at some point in the future, the use of consumers' identity and, and as a result, their data was likely not to persist on the internet. Meaning at some point, someone was going to stop the mechanisms that make use of that data from actually functioning properly. Um, that was the primary you know, uh, reason. The second one was it, it, the same ways of doing it have been used for a long time. And so like any innovators, we were thinking, how can we do this better? <laughs> How could we use more modern day technologies to solve the problem of how to find an audience and target that audience in a better way? Um, and we deployed, you know, large language generative AI to do that at a time when nobody was even talking about using large language generative AI. In fact, I don't even think it was part of the zeitgeist. Nobody even knew what LLM was right. back in 2017. But yeah, we went that route. And we're sure glad we did go that route. It was, it's proven now, obviously, fast forward, that to have been the right choice. Yeah, but you had to live through telling that story many a year. It is. <laughs> and explaining what it was and how it was going to work. Exactly. But so, so do that again now, if you could. Yeah. Explain to everybody, how does your tech work and how does it replace what the cookies going away? You bet. And the benefit for the advertisers for that. Right. So quickly, for, for those who don't know, when people say they're building large language generative AI, it, effectively what that means is they have built a machine that has read everything that there is to read on the Internet. I like to say sometimes the collective wisdom of humanity because it's that grand. Mm. Um, our tech is that kind of tech. It's literally read hundreds of billions of pages of content and it reads every day uh, because it continues to update itself. Um, the, the, the language model part of it is as a result of reading all of that information, you find associations between words, between pages, between images and words. There's a pattern, if you will, uh, between all of those things. And, and if you could peer inside our LLM, you would see concepts interconnected with each other. And those concepts are basically the formation of the language, anything that you know to be true in the English language or any language for that matter. The paradigm shift that you have to make when you're thinking about what we're doing versus how we, it has been done historically is when we designed technology to find audiences 30 years ago, um, we were always asking ourselves the question, who is Chris? Right, that was sort of the fundamental question to be asked. Who is Chris? And if I can find Chris, how do I find more information about Chris? His income, his age, his gender, his family, his interests. And then that would be stored in some structured database um, so that we could identify Chris and then go look up his data and make a decision about whether or not to show an ad because he fits some segment category that fit what we think are our audiences. Um, we knew back then that the better question, the more powerful question was, not so much who Chris is, but why is Chris interested in the things he's interested in? And by extraction, Chris, everybody, you know, in the United States, let's just say. Right. Why are people interested? Why it is a way more powerful question to, to answer. Um, and the only reason why it hadn't been answered in the past because the, the technology wasn't there to answer it and it wasn't designed to answer that question. So when we were designing our LLM, 
That's the question we wanted to answer. And we knew a model of the language lent itself to answering that question because why is a language thing? Um, so here's a, an example, right? Imagine for a second, which you don't have to, because it's true. Our AI has read everything there is to read about every product, service, or brand in the world. And so it already knows the reasons why consumers are interested in those product, services, or brands. Uh, an example I like that most people understand well, because it was a really popular story, is the Theranos story. So the Wall Street Journal broke that case. Um, and RAI has read everything there is to have read about the Wall Street Journal. Um, and, and that means it knows the tens of thousands of reasons why people are interested in the journal. One of those reasons is Theranos, because they broke that case, right? Now, our AI knows way more than just Theranos. It knows Theranos is connected to the Wall Street Journal, but Theranos is also connected to Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Belwani and George Schultz and the DeVos family who invested in it and Tyler Schultz, who the one who basically ratted out, right, uh, Theranos. It, it knows all those connections, right, which it uses to make a decision, by the way. So let's, let's just pause there and say, hey, there's one audience that is likely of, of good value for putting a Wall Street Journal subscription ad in front of because they're interested in the Theranos case, which is what the journal broke, the case they broke. So that's one an audience. That's one side of the equation for one case. The other side, as you well know, is the real-time bidding exchanges. So there's 100 billion different opportunities every day to put an ad somewhere. Right. Um, what our AI also uh, does is it predicts why someone's in front of a screen. Um, and again, it doesn't use anybody's identity. It doesn't use cookies. It doesn't use any data on the consumer. It doesn't need it. It just needs to know what is that URL that we're looking at right now that's offering the site. It's already read that page and all of the pages associated with that particular URL. And so it's going to make a conclusion about why someone's in front of the screen, an anonymous person we don't know. Perfect example for the Wall Street Journal. Imagine the site is a bio site about George Schultz. Mm -hmm. okay? That site, there's a lot of them on the Internet, by the way. They wouldn't have anything in them about Theranos because they don't want to write about that on his biography. He has a storied career in politics and that was not particularly successful, so it's unlikely there's anything in there about that, and there isn't. Our AI would say, I know this site, I've read this site. This site primarily is not exclusively, but primarily by George Schultz. And it would, in its mind, in our AI's language model, it'd say, George Schultz, oh, wait a second, he's connected to Elizabeth Holmes, and they're both connected to Theranos, and they're connected to Sonny Balwani. Oh, and by the way, Tyler Schultz is connected to Theranos because he's the one that ratted out Theranos. That's his grandson. And it would say, the only reason someone's in front of this screen right now is because they're interested in Theranos. It has nothing to do with the former secretary's great career as a politician. Right. They're here because of that. And so it would say, oh, that's a match for the Wall Street Journal customer we have, client. We'll put that ad there. Interesting. That's how it works. You know, and, and, and what kind of exchange is... Uh, how how do you tie into the exchanges to do that? We're so plugged in. You are. So yeah. You're into the the trade desks of the world. We, yeah. We we, we 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 didn't we didn't want to be in the demand side platform business. Not because it's not a great business. It is. Yeah. But we figured it's a different business. And it's been one. You know, to some degree in They'll the marketplace. Buy you. <laughs> they will be the buyer of you at this point because they need you. They they they, they need your technology to keep surviving uh, in their business because everything that they've been doing has been cookie-based and exactly. all of their targeting has been cookie-based. And exactly. without that, they what are they left with? I mean, advertising dollars are going to dive on those exchanges unless they provide solutions like yours that, that can make up for it. So I would imagine that one of these big trade desk comes and tries to buy this business. I, I think it would be wise if yeah. they were, uh, you know, or they can spend the next seven years doing what you just did for the next seven years and trying to figure it out. And overcoming our patents and yeah. 100 million they're going to have to spend to do it. It's time to market. Yeah. You know, for that. And and the bar is high on, on large language generative. Having built it ourselves, the bar is very high on the on the technology. But yeah, we 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 didn't want to be in the, the, the platform business. We figured that they were way better at that than we would ever be. Yeah. Uh, we said, hey, how do we replace all the targeting that gets done underneath that with the, with the technology? And that's why we focused there. That, there we could put a dent in, in the equation, right? 
we were never going to be a better, you know, demand side platform. They are exceptional at that. So what comes next now? Now you have, you have what the market needs, right? Finally, the, you know, Google turns off the spigot. You have what, uh, you have what the market needs. How do you get it out there and make sure every one of these agencies is using it? We, uh, we are investing in our sales team. <laughs> um, we need more feet on the street. We need people to know we exist. Um, you know, we did 75 million last year. We, you know, hopefully we'll do a lot better. We had great momentum coming out of last year. So uh, we think we're going to have a good year in store for us. But still at, a, let's say, 100 million in revenue. We're still small right. relative to this industry. So getting our name out there so that people know there is a solution to this problem that exists today yeah. that's been used many times with some of the largest companies on the planet because we do have a number of very large clients right who are you know have been clients for quite some time so it works already it's ready to go uh we just got to get our name out there off the 75 million they did last year what is the what's the bottom line look like um we should be free cash flow positive we've said this before about our company we're not free cash flow positive right now there's a certain inertia to get over with a technology that says material is ours yeah but once you break that level then you're done yeah right and we uh routinely said this and been consistent for the last five years between 95 and 110 million revenue, we'll start being free cash flow positive. Okay. Um, and in fact, we proved that, Chris, last year because we uh, we had the highest quarterly revenue in Q3 last year we've ever had. It was 24.6, and we were free cash flow positive. That's great, right? So we hope this year is the year where we turn that 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 over. We become free cash flow positive, and then it's you know up from. That, does it get to a point where you can start to reduce the expenses a little bit, or or do you still need to constantly have that? Um, techno technological edge, so nobody's catching up. It, we're way ahead now, but you always want to be on the upside of the innovation and making that harder. But but it doesn't scale in proportion to revenue. You know, we got a great engineering team in this company. A lot of us are engineers. I'm an engineer, right? Um, so we're engineering minded. It, we don't need to double our headcount with engineers. It's not going to make the problem happen or the solutions happen any faster, right? At this point, so. I'm not worried about that. If we're investing in resources now, it's client-facing resources, right? Sales people, account managers, and when we're running the service for our client campaign managers, that's where you know the, we scale resources in our company. Uh, but we're very efficient even at that. We only have 95 people in our company, and we're you know we're, again we're hopefully do somewhere near 100 million this year. So you can do it. So a million dollars an employee, good for you, right? So we you know we we're efficient, you know we're you know so I don't see us changing that. No, I remember you telling this story for the last you know, so many years and, and you're a point on back then. It just took Google a little bit longer than anticipated to turn off the, you know, yep. what the, the advertise. I think what Google tried to do was create their own solution right. that would compete with the cookies and replace it so they could dominate more. And they, they really tried to tell the market, oh, we're doing something good so nobody could track your privacy, except us, except the Google themselves, who then it can try to sell more stuff to the advertisers, you know? You know, Apple was the biggest, you know, catalyst, if you will, to the technological change. Mm. Um, you know, in Safari browsers and most iOS devices, a lot of people don't even realize this. Advertisers don't realize it, but there's no way to track people very right. much on Safari. And that includes first party or third party. Yeah. You know, they in, it, Apple introduced some AI called intelligent tracking prevention. It's kind of in the name. Right. Where, you know, they can tell when mechanisms are being used to try to track you around the Internet, regardless of what those are. First party cookie, IP address, URL tracking, fingerprinting, all the tricks, if you will, of the past generations trade, um, which is exactly why we said, hey, let's just not use any of that. All right. Let's build a tech that doesn't require or is dependent on any of that. But Apple was the biggest catalyst for this. Fifty five percent of mobile browser share is iOS, and uh, that inventory is, for the most part, not being targeted. Right. Can't. Because they can't. Yeah. Why? Because in a transaction, they look for the ID. Yeah. If it's not there, which it isn't with iOS devices, they just ignore the transaction, right? So it's staggering, staggering right? But the time is coming. Yeah, well, and that means that every 14-year-old uh, girl is a 15-year-old girl is untrackable because they all have iPhones, <laughs> right? Right, so... That's uh, right. <laughs> there you go. There's an audience. Yeah, there's an audience for you. <laughs> uh, so... Congratulations. I think you're in a good spot. It's, uh, you know, I, I know how it is to feel like, you know, uh, pushing a rock uphill for so long and all of a sudden, you, you know, 
you're you're swimming down river now and it's, it's always uh, longer than you think i know you know people don't realize building companies is uh you know there's sort of this notion that oh it just takes a couple of years yeah you know that's never the case no, you know yeah. you could even go back to some of the greatest companies we know microsoft's and oracles it, you know it took them a lot longer than people realized to get to a, a critical mass yeah right so yeah it takes time but you gotta stay at it well congratulations uh rich congratulations yeah, on this check it out INUV, New York Stock Exchange, and Nuvo, and uh, go to the website and check out uh, their technology and what they're doing.